the line right now. Thank you, Pat. Okay, if there are no other questions, uh, Pat, we'll move on to number three. Um, in other words, what are we hearing from the field and what kind of uh, answers are they seeking and how is it that we can better serve? So I know from ours, what we are going to be doing is having a um, county superintendent's discussion this afternoon at three at, or 3.30, I apologize. And it will be discussing elections. Um, it will be discussing um, proficiency and transportation also will be part of the agenda. And we are um, excited that in our conversation that we've had with them, that they are doing everything that they can as well to try to help our very, very rural as much as understand where we might be um, in our larger counties with uh, more specifically with the elections. So that's probably one of our number one issues that we have at this point. We did receive a, a conversation this morning with um, the uh, with OSEP and OSARS and uh, it was Assistant Secretary for Special Education Mark Schultz. There were about seven people from uh, government DOE that were on this call in how to serve Montana specifically in special education services in this time of uncertainty and getting good direction uh, from guidance documents that have most recently come out, but also looking outside the box on how we can serve um, students at this point that may have a disability or an IEP or a 504 within that realm. So those are pretty much the two issues that we're looking at at this point. Superintendent Arnson, uh, this is Kirk, and I have just a question for you about the county, just county superintendents at three o'clock, uh, correct? Today, or is that it'll the be, super... I apologize. Yes, Dr. Miller, it will be at 3.30 today. Um, we will send you information. I know that they are underneath your umbrella. Um, in visiting with Kathy yesterday, uh, this was a suggestion. So uh, be more than happy to include you on that agenda for sure. Thank you. Of course. <clears throat> so Dr. Miller, since we have you on that uh, phone, we have you right at this point. Dylan, do you have any questions regarding what school closure means or what we are receiving from school leaders? Um, yeah, so we've received um, just inquiries from parents, teachers, uh, mostly parents and teachers because districts are handling this definition of closure differently. So we know that OPI's guidance and the governor's guidance has been that schools are not closed, they're offering distant learning, but some schools are using the term school closure, um, I guess, as a cop out. And so I'm going to have Julia talk to, talk to Rafe, but I really think we need to use a, a different term than school closure because we all know that schools are not closed right now. The buildings might be physically closed, but school, schooling and learning are still happening. So. And Lance, you brought up in, especially with the transportation, that the guidance that is in statute uh, is not for school closure. It's basically what's happening right now with, um, if I can get the terms, and maybe you can, you have those terms in front of you as well, Lance. Um, We're converting to offsite, uh, offsite yep. instruction. Offsite yep. instruction, and I, I think, you know, words do matter, and since uh, that was, that was part of what the governor had directed in his order, uh, if we could be all on the same page of what that is, I think it will uh, help in where we are now, but also exceedingly when school doors do open again. And I think that it, that's important. Okay. Anything else that anyone would like to have as a number one issue? And I know Marco, you're on the phone as well, and thank you. Uh, one of the other questions that had come up uh, via a county commissioner 
and it relates to the facility as much as it relates to uh, teachers being prompted into the building. And I'm sure that you are working through all of those issues on making sure that members, uh, faculty are uh, in safe uh, environments as well. That's correct. Thank you. And that's what that's what we are sharing. Um, and I believe that's that's exceedingly important for us to be that we again in putting everything forward. Have any of you heard anything from your national associations regarding this in not just a Montana view, but in a uh, national, in a national view? Uh, what is happening within your associations and possibly you're, you're getting some great insights on where we should go in Montana in our remote learning? We've been tracking a little bit, this is Marco, uh, the NEA and both NEA and FT are concerned about the internet access as well as I'm sure all, all groups are. Um, but they were, they were supposed to be something or trying to get something included in this last um, Senate bill to help bolster internet access and I, and I don't know where that is. but. I know that's a concern from that whole digital inequity thing is a concern not only for rural schools, but also urban places as well. Superintendent, this is Kirk and um, our organization uh, has access to AASA, uh, the Superintendents Association, NASSP, um, the Secondary Principals Association, uh, NAESP, the Elementary Principals Association, uh, M case or a case that the Council of Administrators of Special Ed uh, and certainly work with NREA, uh, the National Rural Education Association, etc. And each one of those uh, organizations are deeply into uh, providing, you know, an abundance of resources that are available for offsite teaching. Uh, um, off-site instruction um, and but the biggest push has been um, all of the issues around the, the federal the Congress dealing with the bills that uh, potentially would provide relief uh, to states and so I was on a call right before uh, with the NASSP um, leadership and they were going through the bill the Senate passed the bill with a 30.8 billion dollar um, relief fund that's there with 13.5 billion going to K through 12. Um, uh, only 49.3 percent of the education allocation was going to K through 12, um, <clears throat> and they said that that bill did not end up um, containing the the request that all of us have made about uh, internet access at home. Uh, and utilization of the E-rate in a more flexible way to provide opportunities for students um, at this time. So, you know, just a, there's like four or five associations um, through our umbrella organizations that we're, we're tracking and we're trying to put the best of those resources and make those available to um, our folks. But that's a challenge. I mean, um, and I think the, the other, um, association leaders that are on this call um, are probably receiving I, I probably am getting 20 emails a day from different types of organizations associations or um, entities that are offering free services uh, available whether it's online instruction or utilizing you know web-based tools to help make things easier uh, and so that that's been a challenge just trying to, to keep up with, um, you know, what potentially would be usable um, for, you know, our schools in Montana and what is just, you know, a sales pitch out there during a, a time of the pandemic. I agree. We also have been receiving a lot of vendor calls and emails as well. And um, that's challenging, very, very challenging at this time. Kirk, thank you very much. Uh, if I'm understanding then, Montana's, uh, part of that 13.5 billion that's for k-12 may go into the million and if we do any kind of an overlay of uh, any equitable distribution the first package that came into dphhs was eight billion and for montana we received five million so if i'm just looking at this we may receive eight 
million. Do you have any clear other un in indications at all about what Montana may receive? Yeah, honestly, I don't. I just, that call was like right before this call and I just was writing notes profusely for their reporting out. It just happened late last night. Uh, and I know that there is a, a White House briefing that's going on at 11 o'clock and I was going to try to jump on jump on that call because it's likely that, that that's a place where they would describe what what bill potentially is sitting on, you know, on the president's desk for signature and what that relief will look like. Uh, what I know is that once all of this gets put together is our association, you know, the advocates for our association like AASA, they're, they're very likely to create the spreadsheet uh, for what that allocation means for K through 12 education. It'll probably get as granular as, um, you know, what Montana, what Montana would exactly. be receiving. But, you know, I think through CCSSO, you probably have access to yeah. the same types of things that, that are available. I appreciate that. Thank you. When I did clarify with the Assistant Secretary for Special Education, with Mr. Schultz, I had asked him where any funding uh, if there has been any funding or any look of any new funding coming for our uh, special education students. And they weren't readily available to give me any dollars at this point. So uh, that's one of the things, you know, all means all, but we need to make sure that we secure our very most. And Pete Donovan, quickly before, and I know there's other things besides 11, and I did want this to be a half hour. But Pete, we do have a uh, Board of Public Education conference call tomorrow. And it is at 11 o'clock um, tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Pete. I knew you were there. I'm sorry, I had a, a little second there trying to get off mute, sorry. Um, could you please repeat the question? Yes, there is a, a Board of Public Education conference call meeting tomorrow at 11 a.m. I just wanted to open the door if you wanted to share anything on that. Correct. No, uh, and the agenda is posted on the board, and the, and the call-in information are all posted on the, the bpe.mt.gov website. So, perfect. Thank you for that. If there is nothing else, we'll visit again. We'll send out another agenda. Um, and if you have anything you would like to add to that agenda, please give uh, Christy here at our office uh, an email or a call, and let us know so that we can have another great conversation as we put all of our districts and our students first. Thank you so much. Everyone stay healthy. Thank you.